Escape two doors. It's coming this way, sir. Good grief. No, no, don't shoot. I want to take a good look at it. Be careful, Doctor. Don't worry, Brigadier. It's a vegetarian. Similar to the third Doctor, I am exiled to the beige planet. And as a result of being grounded here, I've been focusing on things that I never got around to. Things like the Voodoo 2 that I repaired. And shortly after that, the Sound Blaster 2.0. I've been gaining a better understanding of this stuff, and now I'm on a roll. Let me explain. In my previous video, I described how when I first got this Sound Blaster Pro card, back in March of 2021, I didn't realize it was sold as untested, and when I plugged it into my machine, this is what I was greeted with. Hardware card cannot be detected. And no matter what I tried, I could never get it to do anything but exactly that. Even though it was untested, the seller did refund a lot of my money, but still, I was stuck with this albatross. And this happened before this channel existed, and before I realized there was such a helpful community out there. When I first looked at this thing, I was like, what the hell am I going to do with it? There's so many ICs, there's so many tiny components, and just like I do with everything, I scoured the internet trying to find some answers. And if you follow this channel for any length of time, you know that this card is very important to me. So having to put this thing in a box and set it on the shelf, and pretty much giving up, well, it feels a bit like this. Four years has passed. And let's say if electronics is an iceberg, then I've learned about that much. But even that much was enough to put me on the right path. And here's how. About eight months ago, I watched this video by Tony359, where he did a fantastic repair. There was two chips that failed on that card. It's a Sound Blaster Pro, just like mine. I left a comment about my undetected card, and he quickly gave me a reply. Undetected is bad. I see a 245 IC there. That should interface with the ISOBUS. You might want to swap that and check the usual voltages. Clock reset. Good luck. So in my last video, I finally figured out that the DMA lines and the address lines and the IRQ lines, they all have separate pins. So if one of them is failing, you just trace from the pads at the base of the card and follow the traces to where they lead. Now in the case of this LS245 chip, these eight pins here are directly connected to the pads at the bottom of the card, and they carry the data bus lines, the bi-directional signals from the CPU. And if they don't work, then you're probably going to see something like this. When I was first trying to figure out what was wrong with this card, I did notice a little bit of corrosion at the top of that LS245. I cleaned it up with the isopropyl, but I couldn't see any more corrosion. At this point, I'd already removed the CT1336 chip, and I'd taken the amplifier off, so removing this LS245, it was like, well, might as well. I'll put it in my programmer, and we'll see if it works. I selected the 74245, I hit test, and everything failed. So perhaps I need a brand new LS245, but I don't have another two weeks to wait, so let's have a look to see if I have any. I dug through my other sound cards, and of course, on the left side of the card, there are two of those LS245s. Right there, and right there. And exactly the same thing on the Pro 16 card. But if I don't have to take these chips off these perfectly good sound cards, I'd prefer not to, so I did some more digging. And I found this stupid old modem that was part of my compact CDS724. And uh, I could care less about it, so it's going to be the donor. And it's also got an LS244, which is the same as the chip that's right above the 245 on the Sound Blaster. But there we are, LS245. This is 30 times speed. I had the hot air station set to 300 degrees, and I cooked it and baked it, and I heated it up as much as possible and eventually turned it up to 350 to finally get to that point where it finally released. And just like the previous chip, it did the same thing. Everything failed. But to make a long story short, there's nothing wrong with the chips. It was just a matter of fiddling with that adapter enough, and I cleaned the legs off with isopropyl, and finally I got both chips to come up normal. 
So if it's not the LS245 chip, then what could it possibly be? I slept on it, and when I woke up and looked at it again, I found the problem in no time at all. While I was procrastinating about having to remove the LS244 chip above the blank spot there, hidden underneath the LS245 is that trace right there. Now let's have a look under the microscope. This is when I realized that the original bit of corrosion that I saw years ago, maybe it was battery acid or something, but it obviously had leaked underneath the LS245 chip. So after a little bit of scraping with that tiny little screwdriver that I created, I started to reveal exactly what had gone wrong with this card. So I tested the continuity, and to my delight, there was no continuity. There was a break in that tiny copper trace. And right where I'm scraping there, at the right corner, that is where there is no copper. Nowhere else it's a problem. All those other traces are still holding on, but that one, no, that's broken. I would never have found this had I not pulled that chip. I made a couple of failed attempts trying to fix that trace. Uh, what I didn't realize is the chip won't sit on the board correctly. And as a result, I decided to make a bodge wire instead. That way, it is reversible, and that'll come into play later. My first attempt at this bodge wire, I used this little bit of copper wire, and under the microscope, it looks like half-inch copper pipe. But it's well suspended, so it's not making any contact with the traces underneath, which are covered with mask anyway. All right, I'm putting the card in. It currently has no 1336 and has no amplifier, but it does have the repair. So let's see if it does anything at all. And the short answer is no, it does not. Hardware card cannot be detected. Next, I soldered in that 68 pin socket for the 1336 chip. I did that in the Sound Blaster 2.0 video, no point in repeating that. And I need to remove that chip and put it in the Sound Blaster Pro. And this was part of my master plan with this socket. Card A being the Sound Blaster Pro, and card B, the 1350B, just to make it easy. Card A had no response, completely dead. Whereas card B had the DMA error. And I guessed that it could be that 1336 chip. By removing the unknown condition 1336 from card A and putting it into card B, my presumption was that it would be either condition 1 dead, which tells me that card A had a bad 1336, and that's the reason why the card doesn't work. Or condition 2, it's exactly the same, I still have the DMA error, which tells me that both cards have a problem that is unrelated to the 1336 chip. The third condition is that it fixed all the problems, and that's what happened, telling me that there's another problem with card A. 1336 goes back into the Sound Blaster Pro. I still don't have the amplifier chip in there, but I don't think that's going to matter. Here we go. Testing, I.O., address, 220 hex. Do I get any change? Damn. Well, not yet. And not yet is exactly right. So it occurred to me to listen to what the card was telling me. This card was failing at the I.O. address. The previous card was failing at the low DMA. So I lifted the 220 jumper. And all this crust fell out of it. And that's what I found inside of that jumper. I gave those two pins on the board a good wire brushing, and then I sprayed them with contact cleaner. I pulled the little brass piece out of the inside of that jumper, and that's what's left of that. It was crumbling and all corroded. I still can't figure out how I overlooked that. That's the first thing I did with the Sound Blaster 2. I cleaned all the jumpers that had anything to do with the DMA, hoping that that was going to be the problem. But somehow I never got around to checking the jumper for the I.O. address. The pins for the jumper are clean. It's a brand new jumper in there. I'm hoping this will finally make a difference. Oh my god! <laughs>
And from this point on, it's just a series of expletives because I am so disappointed that I forgot to check that jumper. And at this point, I'd forgotten all about the repair that I'd done underneath the LS245 chip. And as everything is successfully working, I'm thinking this has been four years. All I had to do was lift the jumper. Such a simple oversight. Or was it? But we'll return to that. First, I need to put that amplifier in. So in a recent video by Bits und Bolts, he expressed some information that Tony told him. That the manufacturer advises against using a socket for the amplifier. I'm going to examine that in an upcoming video. I'm going to find out what the temperatures are like with or without the socket. And another big factor is passive speakers. They were really designed to be used with unamplified speakers, unlike just about everything that we have now. And those type of speakers can draw a bit of current, and they can heat that chip up. I have no intention on ever using passive speakers ever again. I just want to know for sure that there's no way that I can possibly prematurely burn that chip out, even with the line out. But I'll do that whole investigation in an upcoming video. Amplifier chip is in. It is time to do a test on this card. It has all the jumpers cleaned up. Brand new amplifier. Card is going into the unit chip. 486 that I repaired in a few videos ago and it's still working incredibly well which is really really nice power and that familiar pop sound is telling me that the amplifier is working all right I'm fast forwarding through this because we've already done this and we know it works to operator FM music that works Digitized sound. Well, I think we have success. Yes, indeed we do. I did the obligatory Duke 3D test on this and it was flawless as well. We still have one problem though. This is the only CT1336 chip I have. I've got two cards and I have one bus interface chip and I want to put that chip back into the older card. I looked all over the internet trying to find the 1336 chip. I need one for this card. What am I going to do? But that's when I found the 1336A. There's an abundance of these chips. It would be a great alternative. Will this chip work in a card that used to have a 1336? I left a comment on one of Neckerware's videos asking him that very question, but I'm going to answer this myself. And there's only one way to find out. I've got the cards, I've got the chips. Can I potentially damage something on the card by doing this? Will I fry the 1336A? Or will this be a cheap way to replace these chips that could possibly fail? Okay, slightly unnerving feeling. This is what you do for science, though. And because I didn't find an answer to this question, we're going to find out right now. Does the CT1336A work where a 1336 once was? Let's find out. Because if it does, that means I have a chip for this card. If it doesn't, and I ruin the card, then it means I'm... Um, out of a card. Fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen. So far, so good. Yep. For operator music. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, good. Yep. All right then. 
Let's get out of here and try Duke. Sound setup. Uh huh. Well, I think that means it works. And I have a new chip for my card. So I answered that first question, whether or not the 1336A will work. Yes, it does. But what I really needed to know, would this card have worked if I just had the wherewithal to check that jumper? Or would that corroded trace underneath the LS245 chip, would that have been a problem anyway? And because I made that bodge connection rather than doing it underneath the chip, it's just a matter of seconds to get that little piece of wire to come off. Let's see what it says. Testing. Yes! It screwed it up. Sometimes failure is what you want. I repaired that bodge once more. This time I used a little piece of resistor wire. Sound card is in. Speakers are on. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Let's hope everything goes. Yep. Look at that. One little trace. Just enough to cause problems. So I definitely wouldn't have fixed the card if I had just cleaned up that jumper. I learned quite a bit from this experience. I didn't know the function of the LS245 chip before, and I found out if you sever even one of those connections, the card's not going to work. I made a bunch of fruitless efforts trying to fix this thing. I mapped out all the capacitors, I replaced every single one of them, but that was unnecessary and it's because I was flailing. I had no idea how to fix the thing. But there's an expression that's kind of corny as hell, but it's persistence pays off. And that's exactly what brought this thing back to life. No longer a dead CT-1600. It doesn't even deserve this badge anymore. I gotta say, I've never been so happy to see something not work. When I removed that little bodge connection and I found out that no matter what, I would have had to remove that LS-245 chip. I mean, what a relief. But at the same time, that's going to be a reminder to never, ever forget the simple things. But this is what you do. You accumulate knowledge and you work with that. I'm really thankful for the work that Tony359 has done. He's a great educator. And if it wasn't for him, uh, maybe I wouldn't be so quick to have taken off that 245 chip. And I would have dragged this thing on for another three or four years. I took his advice and I'm really glad that I did. I have a crazy, nostalgic love of these cards. And sure, there might be better cards made, but I love Sound Blaster cards. And now, I don't have just one that I've fixed, I've got two that I've fixed. I'd call them the Socket Blasters, but I think that Scrap Computing already took that name. Maybe somebody out there can come up with something, but uh, I'm just happy they work. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm going to try doing some experimentation with the amplifier chip just to make sure that I'm not going to wreck anything. I hope you enjoyed this journey. It took me four years to finally get here just like it did with the Voodoo card and the Sound Blaster 2.0 and well good things come in threes don't they? Get your retro on and escape to DOS.